Hello everyone, I am Judah Bernard with the Rise Creating a Voice. I am the wisdom dialoguer and the motivational warrior of the Rise Creating a Voice. I'm just here to have a couple of words today. Uh, we're still in our Are You Spiritually Mature Yet? Um, I'm part of the segment. This is the whole month of July. Um, being that it's like mid mid month and just trying to see mid year and see are people really spiritually mature yet? Um, we talked about um, being spiritually mature, mature versus growth last week. How's everybody doing? Um, and we just want to really know about spiritual maturity and what does that look like? We understand um, in in the preface of this, we talked about being physically, mentally. And also spiritually mature, and you have to be aligned in all three areas in order to mature. Um, we also talked about growth and spirituality too, as well. For those who don't know, I am the wisdom dialoguer and the spiritual um, um, wisdom dialoguer and the motivational warrior of the Rise Creating Your Voice podcast, and also um, spiritual um, coach too, as well as counselor. Um, and just continue to spread love. Number one. Um, spread hope and also spread joy and um, and, and um, be able to help people find peace. Um, and peace comes within God. And God's the only one who gives peace and joy. Um, you know, I don't want to be here before long. We want to talk about desire and wants um, this time go around because I think people um, understand what a want is. But then again, to have a desire to have uh, maturity maturity and spirituality, maturity and physical, um, being physically mature, and also um, having that maturity in the mental too as well. All three are combined, can power up to be, you could be a phenomenal person. We're already beautifully and wonderfully made by God, but what, I, what we have to understand in that beautifully and wonderfully made, there are, th there are things that we need to do. Um, if those who read the Bible, definitely talks about which is basic instructions before leaving earth is you know you have to pray with prayer without cease you have to fast you meditate you do a lot of things um to honor god and to worship him and we must come to those how you doing canalis wallace um we must come to that realization of what we must do in order to get right with god and actually receive our rights to the kingdom of life and eternal life that is um how is everyone doing um are you spiritually mature yet? And that's what our conversation is about today. Talking about desires and wants. Desire meaning that it's something, a strong, a firm thing that you desire to have. How are you doing, Jerry, Bear, Sweet, Like, Shaw? I'm hoping I said that right. How are you doing, Jay Luna Goddess? And um, a want is something that you desire, not desire, you have a short desire. Desires turn into a strong, affectionate type of thing that you will do anything to have. Like anybody that desire um, the opposite sex or the same sex. It's sort of like you have that strong desire. And at, at that time, you're, you're, you, you're wanting more of it. Um, you anticipate it. Um, you have a, a strong, how you doing, Candace? You have a strong liking for or strong need and you will do anything. That's just like you can want the want doesn't necessarily brings into an existence of you need it, but the desire because you want it so often turns into a desire. How you doing, Bolton Peter? Um, so we want to understand what the difference is between desire and want. Most people have the desire but don't want to take the accountability after they get that desire or the responsibility of what they need to do in order to keep that desire. Um, some people fail that desire. What does that look like? Um, I desire to have a, lot, a, a, a relationship with Christ. I have, I, I have the desire to actually manifest what I need through Christ. Um, that's my desire. So I know I, what I have to do is pray. What I have to do is fast. What I have to do is meditate. What I have to do is read the Bible. There is some accountability I must take when I have desires. Um, once is, okay, I can say I want to read, but necessarily does that mean I have to read? The thing is I'm saying desire. Desire it gives it a strong affirmation of I will go after it. Uh, more desires comes into being mature. Uh, wants come to be in growth. Um, I want to grow up. That's a, that's a soft want. Most people say they want to grow up, but then again, what's that accountability and being responsible in that growth process? 
what's the responsibility and accountability and my desire is maturing. Maturing is different from grow. Everybody grow physically. I'm just going to say that. Everybody understand that. How you doing, crazy Gomez? Everybody must understand that. Everybody's going to grow physically. But maturing is something that's an infinite wisdom and an infinite things that you have come into a realization of how you're going to do it. Growth is a part of maturing, but the thing is, in growth, to mature, you have to really, really grow. You have to be accountable. You have to be responsible. Um, and there's the accountability in growing. Um, yes, physically, we're going to grow. Every year, we celebrate another year. It's, it's an anniversary uh, when we grow to another age. Um, but in that anniversary, how are you maturing to celebrate that growth? I know people say happy birthday. I say happy anniversary because you only had one birthday, and that was way back when. So different for me, different for you, but that's how I do it. It's a happy anniversary every time I turn another year. It's the anniversary of my birthday. So um, how are we spiritually maturing? Um, and what do you need in order for you to mature? In order for you to mature, you have to have that desire. You got to have that desire. What is that desire? The desire to need God. The, not, the desire to have a relationship with God. A desire to have that personal relationship with God. Um, I you know, get off many calls. I, I talk to a lot of people and I study human behavior. One thing that I've learned, if you did not have that, that, that behavior or that environmental piece within your household, you're going to kind of subject yourselves to outside sources to try to get that. One thing we must understand is this, is we all got to have that personal relationship with God. How you doing, Masad Muhammad Jod? Um, we must always have that personal relationship with God. And we do understand we have a lot of religions on here. The thing is, I believe in one God, one faith, one baptism, just one. One faith, one faith, that's it. Just one faith. We believe in God. I won't. Let me say I believe in God. Um... And, and, you know, I can't, I can't speak for everybody else. Um, one thing is, we definitely have to understand how you're doing true. Um, when, when we come into a whole spectrum of maturity, I've already forestated. Number one is maturity comes to, in a physical form, it comes in a spiritual form, and it comes in a mental form. In order for all those three to be aligned at a high they got to be aligned with each other. Um, like I said, like one, spiritually. If you're here spiritually, it's not going to work. You're going to have a still a lot of confusion and things that's going to go on. If you're here um, physically and you're here spiritually, you see how that's not aligned? It's like a, it's like a skewed slope. Um, and then if you don't have anything over here mentally, you're just all confused. That confusion is going to bottle up to be a bunch of confusion. And um, I, I don't know if you guys saw my post the other day. I said, you know, all that confusion in your life, that's the devil. I said it. Um, it says it in the Bible that God is not the author of confusion. Anytime confusion comes about you, that is the devil. I said it. Don't, don't, don't shoot the messenger, but I'm just speaking. Um, and a lot of us like to, and in those areas, if you're still down here, and it's like a downward slope. Uh, we must we must understand that you, growth has been stifled, or your behavior in your growth has been stifled. What are you saying? Okay, this is what I'm saying. That number one is that somewhere you are still a child. I explain this so clear to everybody. If you're still arguing, if you're still crying. Um, all of that stuff that children do, um, that means you, you, you might not have matured just yet. Um, what am I saying? What am I saying is we as a people, we as human beings, have a maturing process. In that maturing process, we got to stop acting like children. Um, we got to stop doing childlike things. Anybody 
after the age of 12, if you have not started maturing and you still see yourself doing high schoolish and preschool and middle school stuff, um, you're not mature in those three areas. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it slowly for people. Um, spiritual mature, physical mature, and mentally mature. Um, sometimes we think childish. Sometimes physically we act childish. Spiritually, we want things to still come to us and we still want pastors, we still want bishops, we still want people to breastfeed us. We want to, them to give us the milk. And some of, some, of, some of people are not ready for the bone. Some people are not ready for the meat because they have not matured in those three areas. I talk about that a lot of times because basically as a minister myself, I want people to get it. Number one, you have to study that show that stuff approved. I don't care what Bible you pick up. Just read the entire Bible and make sure that you pose it just particularly for you. Um, I have clients where I, I tell them, number one is, once you're able to decipher, once you're able to read, once you're able to ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you daily in your Bible study, if you have a spouse, if you have a significant other, don't force them into doing it when you become more knowledgeable. You have to teach them how to do it. Most people like to force people into, can you, you know, and some people are just not ready. That's why I tell people, before you choose a spouse, make sure they are, I wouldn't say equally yoked, but they have a desire to learn as you're learning too as well. Um, here I go with that word desire again, right? <laughs> um, I think people stop and stop thinking about desires that then they want. Uh, just like a lot of people lust. That's like a want. Um, when you lust, that's a want. That's not a desire. And some people call it desire because they feel like they have a feeling when they lust. Um, so then we come into the realization of that's not desire. That's a lust, which lust is usually wants. It's not that you need it. It's that you want it. Um, we have a lot of learning to do. And I'm glad that I'm, I'm teaching this uh, from this perspective because basically... I myself had to learn that too. That's why I, I, I take time out to figure out whether it's a lust, whether it's a want, whether it's a need versus a desire. Some things we don't need to desire. Um, tell, tell you, um, the, these, these right here, these eyes, they'll fool you a lot. <laughs> um, how you doing, Deacon Talks? Um, how you doing, Breeze Life? Uh, we have to understand what does that mean? These eyes will get you in trouble. They will get instantly get you in trouble because through the eyes we see so many things, so many things, so many things. But then again, are we spiritually mature yet? If we look toward God, if we look to God, then God will decide for what those needs are and what what what, what His will is. And what what is that? Remember, we were always wonderfully and beautifully made through God. So how are we allowing ourselves to do God's will? First, you have to seek him. He said, first seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And all the things will be added to you. Got to understand what that means. First seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm, I'm, that's what it says in the Bible. And all the things will be added unto you. Um, what does that mean? That means first seek if we seek him first, it's a lot of things that will be uncovered for us so we won't have to. And he also said, oh, taste and see. Now, I'm going to give you my verbiage of it, okay? This is how I see it. This is how the Holy Spirit led me to see that, was, oh, taste and see. If we read and taste and digest the Bible, our eyes will be open to better things. That That's the word I'm giving. Um, many might not Agree with it, but it said, oh, taste and see. Taste, put the, digest the Bible, read the Bible, digest it. Um, like John Epitome in Revelation, he, he put the Bible, ate it. Okay? So what we have to understand, what does that mean in concept is that we have to taste and actually seek after his righteousness. Oh, see how that, see how that one went right on along. Um, any questions? Because I, I know some people can listen and I know some people can adhere to what desires mean. But then again, when we have been taught 
and human behavior and in our environments and our social settings. Sometimes we have been given words that we think that should be right. But then again, I tell people, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest, we have to have that personal relationship with God. I can't keep saying that. Anybody want to come up now because we are open to see what people have to say. Are you spiritually mature yet? And how can you tell? How can you tell? We're talking about desires versus wants. Some people just want to stay exactly where they are because they feel that Jesus Christ is a savior and he will save us each time. One thing I've always told people, why don't we treat Jesus Christ as Lord so we can honor him and he's our master and we are, we are, we're supposed to be obedient to him. So the thing is, I decipher that different because basically if we don't come into a realization that he was our savior and he is our Lord now, you're not going to mature because you're always looking for him to save you. That's just like a baby whining forth milk from the mother because I'm hungry. Let me say that slowly. That's Lord like if you do not address him, understand Jesus was our savior when he died up on the cross. Yes, I'm going to have to say that slowly. That was our savior part. He ascended to heaven and became our Lord. We should be obedient. He left here for us in this particular time. He said, I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave you somebody who's going to be a comforter. So in our times now, we are supposed to be comforted and wait upon his return. How many of us are comforted? But how many of us actually even address the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us daily? Or are we still saying our Father? Or are we still saying... Jesus Christ come and save us when he left the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. That's that's what we are. We on that third that third. Um, I know it's a lot for people because people are teaching different genres of the Bible. Let's just say that because they, they they're doing what they, they know how. But when you're spiritually led, that's something totally different. That's something that's an ability that. I impress upon people to have a personal centered relationship. Have a personal centered relationship. Understand what that means. That means you yourself get to know Jesus. You yourself get to know God. You yourself need to get to know the Holy Spirit. Read, fast, pray, meditate. Do the necessary things that you need to do to get your personal relationship with God. I try to tell people a lot is... I'm not asking people to stop listening or going to church. But in your long time, get what you need for you out of the Bible, out of the scriptures, out of whatever you read to get that word. Your daily bread, whatever. Read the entire Bible. So you can actually feed upon whatever that preacher is saying, whatever that pastor is saying, whatever that teacher is saying, whatever that deacon is saying, whatever they're saying so you can be able. He said, study to show thyself approved. I, I got to keep saying that. Study to show thyself approved. That means read the Bible. Um, a lot of things I say to people is, number one, we, we, we spend so much time in different areas and different, different things and just do our own thing. Sometimes we get lost. And become confused basically because we don't read, basically because we don't study. So I, in this, I'm admonishing people to actually maturely get to that per part where you're having your own relationship with God, uh, where you're having your own peace of mind with God, where you won't be confused all the time. How you doing? Got a loved one. You just got to understand that God is so awesome. He is so great. Um, he has the ability. He got all power in his hand. Did I say some? I said all power. And what do I mean by that? That means all power. Um, you're here You're here right now because of him. Um, you're here right now on this live because of him. I'm here right now because of him. I'm just thankful to God for this message. Um, I'm telling you, when I, when I, I tapped this um, last week, I ain't going to tell no story. My numbers went down. They shot down because nobody want to hear about God. I know I do. I want to hear about God. So I'm hoping that this is enlighten people. And for those who are enlightened by it, just go and seek out God for your own self. Go and seek um, spiritual guidance, spiritual counseling, spiritual coaching, 
Whatever you need to get closer with God. And I'm saying this because basically I don't want people to get misguided. And that's why I'm coming on because it's a lot of um, mishap out here. Um, people speaking and doing whatever they do. Uh, and, you know, it's just things. Um, we got to have a clean heart. We have to have a clean heart. Um, forgive. Let me say that. Let me say that out loud. Forgive. Um, and number one, forgive yourself. Um, I, I, I talked about it the one other week ago about self-loathing. If you are downing on yourself, if you hating on your own flesh, how you think you're going to get into the kingdom? It says that in the Bible. It says it. Um, just things that we do in life where we need to be more kind and loving to ourselves. How are we spreading love? How are we giving? How are we loving ourselves? Um, that's important too as well. Or are you loving yourself? Do you have the ability to be capable of continuing loving yourself daily, hourly, secondly, whatever it is? You need to love yourself. He said love, your, love thy neighbor as yourself. Do you love your neighbor? Um, um, and and that, that comes from agape love, from an internal perspective, but it's, it's, it's international where you're able to um, contribute to that internationality of love. Um, one last thing before I leave. Be able to know who you are and what your purpose is. Um, I think people lose, lose their purpose sometimes in confusion um, because a lot of people uh, will come at you with different um, theology, um, a lot of different things. Um, number one is, I'm going to keep saying this, God is not the author of confusion. I'm going to say it again. God is not the author of confusion. I'm going to say it again. God is not the author of confusion. I'm going to say it again. God is not the author of confusion. Whenever there's confusion around, just know God is not the author. And if you believe in him, and that's 1 Corinthians 14, and, uh, 14 chapter and the 33rd verse. Um, God is not the author of confusion. It says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. That's what it says. Everybody go to 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, 33rd verse. God is not the author of confusion. Um, I know people say, oh, it's a lot of confusion in my life. God is not in that. Okay? People will persuade you that it is God. God is not the author of confusion. I'm like, I will continue to say that. So when you have that in your life, you can go to 1 Corinthians 14, 33 and say, God is not the author of confusion. If your spouse is arguing with you, God is not the author of confusion. But understand, sometimes we got to be still and know that he's God. Yep, be still and know that he is God. Sometimes you got to close your mouth too. Sometimes you got to close your mouth. Sometimes you have to close your mouth. King James Version. Uh, for, uh, 46 Psalms in the 10th tenth, uh, tenth verse. 46 Psalms in the 10th verse. You got to understand that. How you doing, Jose Villa de Vida? Psalms, the 46th uh, 46, um, Psalms in the 10th verse. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Just be still. And know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And he says that in the 46th chapter, 46 Psalms in the 10th verse. I did 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 14 and 33. God is not the author of confusion. As I leave here today, I want people to make sure that they grow spiritually. And growing spiritually gets you to a point of maturity. Um, some of the things that you know that you would, you will see for yourself is once you fast, once you pray, once you um, just continue to read God's daily word. Um, what happened? Hey, hey, man, Jay Barry, I got you on that. Let me tell you one thing you have to do. I'm, and, I, and you could answer this and ask me. When I answer this, I want you to tell me if you if you don't mind. And thank you for being vulnerable. Uh, one thing I, I tell people is, 
before I started reading the Bible, I asked for guidance through the Holy Spirit. I pray, I pray. If I don't understand it, I have to stop because now I'm getting in my own way. I'm trying to interpret the Bible. Sometimes we're in, in our flesh because this is flesh. You see this skin right here? That's flesh. We start trying to analyze the Bible ourselves. But once we start asking the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and be pure in heart. Oh, you got to be pure in heart. You got to take all you need. And let me be honest with you. You might have a, and I'm going to tell you, when I was reading the Bible and read it like constantly, sometimes I had a bad day. And I had to allow myself to calm down from that bad day and then pray to the Holy Spirit because right now I was in a, I was in a bad situation, just bad mindset. And I prayed and I prayed. I kept praying. You know, sometimes I pray for an hour, um, two hours, because I want to be making sure that I'm able to Get what the Holy Spirit is giving to me. Sometimes we go into different things and be be hard on ourselves. Sometimes I had to put the Bible down because I was looking like maybe I'm too gripped. But then when I saw that I started repeating, I was fasting. I was meditating. I was doing everything. It just seems like some some chapters turn into I can read a whole chapter or I read several chapters. Uh, because basically it became so invigorating for me that I had the desire to want to keep reading. I wanted to make sure that I was honored by reading. You know how it feels when you get a certificate um, or, or somebody just say, I appreciate you when you graduated high school, kindergarten. It was that feeling like, oh my gosh, I have read the whole entire Bible. I mean, I keep reading it over and over again because it's, it's still a way of studying. But the one thing that I did, the things that were powerful to me, I highlighted. The things that were strong to me, I highlighted. Things that were I had questions about, I circled with an ink pen. Because basically, I needed to go back and revisit those. Um, most people, you know, just go read it and then they, they don't have no, no um, like I did. Uh, and I can show you my Bible. Where is it? Here, hold on. I'm sorry if I showed y'all my dirty room. <laughs> this this is my Bible, and I had a lot of these in there, a lot of tabs and stuff. Um, and you'll see. Look at my Bible, full of highlight, <laughs> full of full of color. Um, certain places, you know. And, you know, I write powerful beside it. Um, when I do a, a sermon or anything, you know, I, I write it in the Bible. Uh, because I go back to that. So whatever your, your keepsake or if you want to have a journal or something on the side or whatever, so you can go back and revisit those things that you might not understood, that, that is a great place to do that. Um, as you see, I even put the date and time that I read it. So when I, when I reference back to it, I, I have some memory or some recollection in it. That's just something I did because I guess I'm just technical like that to say, hey, okay, I'm going to start off here. I'm going to tell you how I did read it for those who might want to know how you're doing. Oh, I'm Billy, Sonny. One thing that I did was I started from the New Testament since we're living in the New Testament. I started from the New Testament from Matthew to Revelations. And then um, went to um, Genesis to um, Malachi. Yep. And I read it. Um, um, so am I asking you to read it? Read it at your leisure. Read it when you, you know that you will be available to actually take that time out to really, really take notice. See, I still, I still got... Um, <laughs> sticky nuts <laughs> I know uh, a little overpowering right now but this was a great thing for me and it's leather bound and one thing is I got from my mother uh, for my birthday this year she actually gave me my great grandmother's bible Ooh, I, I was excited I was really excited about that um, so 
I got that. So, you know, I, I'm seeing what my great grandmother marked up in her Bible, too, as well. And it's amazing how some of the same stuff she got marked up in her Bible, I got marked up in my Bible. Um, so I didn't want to be here long with you guys, but I just want people to understand that. What does that desire looks like for you to even read the Bible? Um, um, one thing is I, I, I came to the realization that I've read so many books and things. Um, yeah. 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 Jay Barry. It was. Yeah. It was like, yeah, it was amazing. And thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope that helps you. And if anybody needs some help, hey, DM me. Hey, who knows? I may even start up a Bible study. Who knows? Because I think. If we if we desire the word, I think God will put us in that place. So if I do start a Bible study, then we can all just come together and just talk about the Bible. I don't even care anymore because basically we're talking about God. So that that's like, you know, that's my pastime. <laughs> so that's what I love to do. I love to do it. Um, no matter where you are. Um, I know I have a lot of international people on here, but God is just so amazing. And, you know, just to get ability to know God is awesome, too, as well. Um, are there any questions? Any more questions? Thank you, um, Jay Barry, for that comment. I hope I answered your question. I know it was like threefold, but I just I just love God's word, too, as well. Um, fasting. Start slow with fasting. Um, you got to have the desire to do a lot of this. A lot of us get in, in our own way because, you know, we want to be like everybody else. Let me tell you, God said he made us peculiar. He made us a peculiar for a reason. That means everybody is different. How you doing? I'm Amit Lyon. Um, and I just want everybody to understand that no matter what, God, God love us. Um, number two is, you know, we have to love ourselves. Um, and, and that takes a big jump depending on where you come from, what environment you were in, and also um, where you want to be um, in God. Um, I'm hoping that answered everybody's questions. Like I said, we need to start being spiritually mature. What does that look like for us? No, no. Let me, let me ask you something. Do you have the King James Version? Um, this is the King James Version. Now, I don't know how old you are. Um, maybe you need the NIV, um, and maybe you need like, um, I don't know your age either. So you might need a, one of the children's Bibles and maybe you need a Concordance, um, DM, DM me and we can, we can, we can venture out to the me that you need to as well. And who knows? I'll buy that Bible for you. So that's how I am. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other comments? I definitely thank you guys for your time. And also your consideration and, and listening to me, um, just knowing that we need to be spiritually mature um, in every way. Um, what, what does maturity look like to you? Maturity to me means I don't argue with people. Maturity means to me that I know how to be quiet. Maturity means to me that I do a lot of self-assessment on myself. I don't gossip. I don't talk about people. I don't lie. I don't do all that stuff. Maturity is Yes, it says it's a King James Bible. Maybe we can look into NIV or um, the English Standard Version. Or I don't know your age and stuff. So maybe you need to do more uh, um, something that's a little bit more um, um, reader friendly to you as well. Um, and maybe it's just the language in there. So let's discuss that offline too as well. Um, you could DM me and we can discuss and we can just go ahead and purchase that Bible for you. Um, any other questions, any other comments? Um, but keep reading. Keep Get the Bible that you're able to follow and able to really, really get into. Um, because it's a lot to learn. It's a lot to learn. Um, and learning is so much better. Um, no more questions. We're going to leave you definitely um, with kind words. Um, love one another. Um, if you have not forgiven... Um, yourself for whatever you've done to yourself, and I always start with self because we are our worst. We are we are our own worst enemy. We criticize ourselves. We uh, damage ourselves. We damage our relationships sometimes about being hard on ourselves because we don't think that we are strong enough or we are we're great enough or anything, and we damage those relationships. 
Um, and in some of those relationships, those you know, the person is not where we are. So we got to understand where everybody is because we're all peculiar people and we all need to make sure that one love, one faith, and one God. Um, while I leave you here right now, I want to thank you guys for listening. I didn't want to be on here long. And um, God bless you and may God keep you. Have a good night.